What is up, guys? Welcome back to another awesome episode of Railroads Online. I'm joined by the one and only Tidmouth. Say hello, Tidmouth. Hello. So today we are standing along the river just uh, at the base of the mountain. I think the coal mine is just over that way. We're trying to reach the coal mine, and I think we can do it. Uh, during the live stream, I got this little bit of track done. Tidmouth and I just finished this uh, passing track right here. Should make Dolan happy. Should probably not, but uh, <laughs> it should make him happy. <laughs> so, um, but before we get started, there is a little announcement update. They released their roadmap. They called it the September update, and they brought on a new development team. So let's head over to Steam right now and take a look at that. And here it is, posted September fifteenth, Friday. September update, dear community, welcome to the lovely month of September. The end of the year is approaching. Autumn is just around the corner, and even Christmas is coming sooner than you can think. Better prepare the gifts already. Today we want to take the opportunity to announce a new development partner, our roadmap until mid of next year, and shine a light on our current team. Let's dive right into it. Welcome to the team, Black Sheep Studio. Earlier this year, uh, fan the fantastic French team at Black Sheep Studio took on the challenge to perform an extensive code review, going through the entire code base of Railroads Online, and yes, they actually checked out every single line of code. We felt right at home with Black Sheep, which is why we are now put the ink to paper and created a co-development partnership going forward. Our new friends will support the existing Railroads Online team from a technical perspective. Speaking of the team, some of you repeatedly asked us how exactly the development process looks like currently and how big the team even is. We prepared a handy little graphic for you which hopefully answers a few questions. The Railroads Online team is roughly 12 people. Research and development, modeling and texturing, community and playtesting. Then we have the, uh, oh, I'm going to butcher this, Astragon. I believe that's how you say that. Astragon Entertainment is roughly 10 people. They do publishing marketing and events, social media, quality assurance, and 2D art and video. Then we have the new Black Sheep Studio is roughly five people. Uh, they have the technical factoring, user interface programming, user interface and programming. So about 27 people total working on Railroads Online. As you can see, the entire team of Railroads Online consists of three different parties, all of all of with their own unique roles and responsibilities. These parties are the Railroad Development Team, Railroads Online Development Team, the Astragon Entertainment Team, and the Black Sheep Studio Team. And you can read through that if you'd like to. Um, our new development roadmap, yes, it's finally here as our cooperation between Black Sheep begins. We have set up a little roadmap for ourselves which the teams will work on over the coming nine months. Of course, even more stuff is planned, and be assured that we'll announce more about that once we can. On the official Torello roadmap, we laid out seven big updates, which are the following and are focused on quality of life and mechanics. They are the anniversary update, the tutorial update, the wiki update, the map update featuring the UI update, the spline update, the loading screen update, and the rights and alert update. I haven't clicked on this yet. I haven't done it. Um, I'll go, I'm going to here in just a few minutes. If you can check out the Torello for more information as we already put in a few bullet points as sneak peek. Oh, oh yep, we're going to click on that here in just a second. Uh, however, this is not all. In parallel, we will introduce much needed bug fixing and performance optimization updates in both single and multiplayer. Awesome. That's great. Also, while also releasing new content pieces, including vehicles, industries, vegetation, and even more surprises. More details about that will also be announced as soon as we can. And that's it for today. Have a good time in the valley and never stop shaping the world of railroads online. Yes, we're working on a patch for the password session issue and hope to be able to release it soon. Let's go ahead and click on that and see what happens. All right, we're presented with this page right here. Um, these are links. Oh, mini map and a compass, that's nice. New full screen in-game map. And better icons for production sites and filter option. Stylized UI, menus and buttons. We've got some big things coming for this game. That's great. Tutorial, they're gonna come out with a tutorial. Explanation for game settings, lots of surprises for the anniversary update. 
super excited for that. All right. Well, with this being done, let's head back to the game, and uh, we'll we'll pick up with building our way to the coal mine. So that's really awesome. I'm I'm very excited for that. The roadmap actually looks pretty cool. Uh, kind of hard to read, but um, we'll we'll figure it out when they start releasing updates. So but yeah. Uh, all right, well, Tidmouth, I think, is going to head up to the coal mine, and he's going to start building his way down. Is that right, Tidmouth? Yep. And I'm going to take off again right here, and I'm gonna we're going to meet kind of in the middle, I'm thinking. He's probably going to beat me. Um, we'll see. I'm not the greatest track layer, and he's a master, so uh, <laughs> it's probably going to be like 20 feet off the end of this track right here. That's where Tidmouth is going to meet me. <laughs> so... All right, I'm just gonna head. Uh, where do you want to start, like actually climbing up? You want to go scout that really quick, so I know where to start angling upward. I mean, my plan was to sort of just where so there's the flat plateau where the coal mine is, uh -huh. and then you'd go straight uh, east. I think that's the way around the map is. The so east hug the. Yeah, hug the east like wall round by the waterfall and then sort of curve around like that edge of the... Yeah, off to, off to the north side, or the south side of that north bowl there along the river. Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to come around the side there on the west point and then come up kind of where we're at. So where do we start going up, I guess? Because we're going to have to climb this pretty steep, right? I don't want to go over 3%, and I have a reason for that. So, um, obviously, we don't want it too steep. That's a big reason. But, <laughs> yeah, I I thought I was further along up this uh, valley uh, than it ended up being. So, I think it's just going to end up being one of those things where <laughs> like, I'm going to be sort of 75% of the way down, you're going to be like way below me and you're going to have to like get back and rebuild <laughs> half the stuff you've done. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> if we if that happens, that happens. Like right in this area, I'm thinking. Where'd you run off to? Oh, you're right, you're like right next to me. Where are you? <laughs> I'm just running up here up on the hill. <laughs> Those air... Oh, there, I, there you are. Yeah, so right here is what I... Exactly what I was thinking just start climbing up this cliff face. I'll get nice and tight and start going up that way and around this bowl. We're not, it's not that high up. It's not like it's at the top of a mountain. So, but it will take a little bit to get up there. Alrighty. Does that sound good? Yep. I'm going to teleport back to the end of my track. And if you want to do what you need to do, So this is all 3% right here, and we need to keep going, and it is kind of a pain in the butt because these uh, little dips, then it rises back up, and it's actually, see, we're 3% already, but the track is burying into the ground, so that's not cool. I bump it up. That's strange. I go from on the radius from zero meters and it's kind of down low to minus a thousand and it bumps it up. Enough yeah, to the clear difference between it. zero and a thousand is quite severe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it though, because it's if it's still three percent, then it gets me up over that little hill.
and my butt kicked by a tree. <laughs> It's not going to make it. Shoot. These little step-ups, they are kicking my butt. Like I just say, apologies to the viewers if we're not commentating that much. We're clearly just concentrating on what we're yeah. doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very accurate. Yeah, I was planning on just kind of speeding up a lot of this. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to be a problem coming up to the that 3% climb. I found a good spot to kind of start transitioning upwards. Well, I haven't even started going down yet because I've been doing the, the, the loop at the top. So. Ah. it puts the railing on the wrong side of the track. Which is a way to flip that when you're just laying it down. <laughs> yeah, there's like nowhere to see. Well, it, it always places it on the same side, so it's, I guess it's just a case of learning which side it's going to be. But Yeah. Well, 
put like a little indicator arrow or something so it's like it's gonna be on this side. hugging that a little too close anyway so I'm gonna blow it away and start over again Um, all right, have you started building coming down yet? Yes. Okay, what gradient are you building at? Uh, I've been going down at 2%. There's a little bit here that's 1% just because I needed to clear a okay. lump. I'm currently at 3%, and it looks like I am almost at the proper height to be, like, at 0%. Like, I'm looking across... The way I can see the coal mine, and it's slightly above me, not much. I think we're going to be good. By a lot. So just want me to flatten off then? Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, honestly, I'm thinking about redoing what I've done at 2% and just making it a more gentle climb. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Keep going. Hopefully we'll see each other here in a minute. I lowered my gradient down to 2%. Let's see how that brings us. run any trains on your section we're definitely gonna have to make sure you've got rid of all the trees yes i have a really bad <laughs> habit about that don't i <laughs> kind of wish we had a way of measuring elevation right now tell me what yeah. your elevation you're at and tools for measuring that sort of thing haven't been invented yet. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, they had some pretty sophisticated uh, surveying tools back then. I mean, nothing like we have now, but... No. Oh, so good being able to walk through the wooden bridge sections now. Yes! Oh, I was so happy to see that. I think I see... Maybe not. Oh, okay. Okay. Way, way off in the distance, I can see the waterfall coming down. And it looks yep. like maybe I saw a line stretch across near the top of it. <laughs> the, the, way, the way I've got the track line, we're going to go right through the spray of the waterfall. <laughs> nice! <laughs>
think I'm to the point where I need to start curving it around to the right. I've been curving it left for so long, I need to go curve right. Curve to the left. <laughs> curve to the right. Crisscross. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, while I'm thinking of it, I'm going to go back and rerun my entire length here and log all the trees out of the way. I know. So weird. And also the, uh, the tilt for them uh, <laughs> is sort of like tilts it, sort of so it's leaning forward or backwards rather than angling it up mm. or down. So... <laughs> Same with the, the shovel prop as well, you can only have that laying flat on the ground. You can't have it like propped up against the wall or something. Oh, I haven't tried that yet. The shovel one. I did the hay bales, um, and I was trying to make a hay bale like lean, a, lean up against another one, and mm. I couldn't make it tilt the right way. I was like, that's not how someone would stack that. <laughs> Yeah, so it needs to it needs to have uh, devs. If you're listening, because you seem to be quite a lot, uh, <laughs> just we we need like full 3D rotation. For yes, the props, please. Exactly. <laughs> oh, and make the signs face towards us when we face when you know, place them down. That'd be great. <laughs> Seems like every time I place a sign, I got to turn at 180 degrees. Yeah, I have that as well. I love this really like last last like two or three recordings we were complaining that should be adding signs now uh -huh. they've added them. We're still complaining. <laughs> Never happy. <laughs> Thanks for adding the signs, but making them better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks for doing what we asked for, but <laughs> No, I'm actually very happy with it so far. I mean, they're, they're, it's a work in progress, right? And we're also beta. So, you know, it's... Uh, I, I wish they would have focused more on the client-side stuff, but it sounds like they got a lot of that stuff fixed as well. So, which I'm super happy for. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of stuff listed in the, uh, the patch notes. Uh... I'll have to walk near some trains and see if I get the clinging, because they've apparently fixed that. Yeah. But apparently they haven't fixed the um, the track connection client side. No. Alright. Well, I feel like a proper lumberjack now. Cut down all those trees. Like I missed a couple. <laughs> Great. Well, those will be the surprise trees. <laughs> There's no way I'm getting up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wait it. Oh, I got it. Yay. <laughs> oh, that is so close. Oh, yeah. Hey, hi. <laughs> what? It, what is your gradient at right now? Uh, I'm currently going down at two. Okay, I'm at three. Oh, bending some bridge around. Oof, duh. Yeah, we're still, still pretty short. Oh, man. We're so close. Well, then the only option is to go back further and come up steeper on my bit. I'm at 3%, but I can go back further. I'm at zero for a long, long ways. So there's nothing really yeah. pre preventing me from doing that. I'll just have to delete this and come back with a little bit 
little bit steeper earlier. Oh wow. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Why don't why don't I just stop if you could hook up to me? Is that possible? Uh, I see you jumping in the in the distance. Shoot, that looks almost level. So, an S bend curve <laughs> with. I think that's about 4% grade. Can make that. 4%? Yeah. Well, the only thing we can do is try it, right? Man, it's a, it's a short. Wow. <laughs> you turn around, you're looking uphill. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we stall out on it, then uh, we'll have to get a more stronger locomotive, I guess. I don't know. Is your um, is your section all logged out? Uh, should be. I will go and check it now. Perfect. Oh, we don't need to run the whole thing if you if you got it. Hey guys, I know we are in the middle of building some track right now. Um, I believe. This is actually the day before we had planned to do this, uh, building this track. So I wanted to cut in right here really quick and show you uh, what we're about to do. Cause I want to surprise Tidmouth a little bit, um, perhaps a little bit more, we'll see. So I'm up here with error. I got all the flat state cars, but what I would like to do is I have a bunch of money. You can see there I have 10,000, over $10,000 here. And I want to buy a new locomotive. So let's jump into this menu. Oh, I gotta be like this. That's kind of annoying. Anyway, uh, go into here and I wanna buy very last locomotive. This guy right here. The ET and WNC 280. And uh, the reason why I want this one is because it has the most tractive effort. Uh, where'd that go? Here it is. Uh, this is the strongest locomotive in the entire game. Uh, stronger than the Class 70 here. Uh, much stronger than this one. Uh, so it, it's it's the best locomotive you know, so far in the game. Uh, it does run on coal, and that's where we're heading right now is a coal mine. Uh, so I'm buying it a little bit premature, like I said. So um, a quick history about this. This is, for those of you who don't know, this is the Eastern Tennessee and Western North Carolina 280, and they had several of these uh, throughout their their history. Um, I think they ended up with like eight or nine of them uh, from the 1880s uh, all, all the way up to like the 1960s and 70s. Um, they served through uh, World War II and um, obviously World War One and all that stuff. They actually were a dual track uh, uh, rail line. And they had several different locomotives, both uh, standard gauge and narrow gauge. They started off, of course, as narrow gauge and then converted over. Uh, but they had a lot of dual dual gauge um, equipment and, and that sort of thing. So anyway, um, they also hauled passengers and uh, different cargo, including like all the cargo that we haul in this game, which I think this is an excellent addition to Railroads Online given what we actually haul as far as the products go. Um, like uh, uh, iron ore was one of the big things that this, this rail line actually hauled. And they, they call it pig iron. Uh, we can call it uh, rails or, or uh, the other one that the smelter produces. I can't brain right now. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and buy this really quick. I believe this is gonna be number, do we got, um, Betsy is number one. Uh, trial is number two, error is number three. Let's, this is gonna be number four, and this is going to be risk because we are doing 
risk and reward for our next two locomotives. Of course, this is the AD D and not the Eastern Tennessee and Western North Carolina. Let's check out the smokestacks here. That one's kind of bold. That makes a statement, doesn't it? But honestly, I kind of just like the crown. That's kind of cool. Headlight. Check out the headlight here. It's Lots of different options here. Six different options. Kind of minimalist. Kind of like the minimalist thing. Yeah, that's cool. And paint. Let's check out the paint. Red, red and black. That. We're gonna go with red and black. So that's gonna cost us. Uh, $7,100. Let's just go ahead and order that. Bam, there we go. Let's go check it out really quick. I'm super excited. Like, really, this is awesome. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm pulling one over on the guys a little bit. <laughs> uh, they actually really work for this, this money. And uh, I've been grinding it out in here as well. But, it's, oh, it's so pretty. All nice and shiny. I do have weather on. Really read the badge. So great. Got the uh, the dynamo up there. Have a compressor. We have to have a compressor. Yeah, there it is. There's a compressor. Excellent mod modeling. Uh, we are uncoupled. Check out the cab. Super cool. Uh, let's probably get some coal in here. The oh, there we go. Right click, scoop, or left click, scoop, right click, dump. Perfect. I'll just do one more scoop just for fun. There we go. Get that warmed up here. I do dig the red. Red's not my favorite color, but it, it fits. Super cool. Nice to see all these filled up now. Go ahead and turn on the compressor a little bit. Turn on the generator as well. Generator, of course, provides electricity for the entire train. And we'll wait for some boiler pressure. So one of the other reasons I came up here, especially with um, this locomotive over here, uh, Error, is I want to buy some more flat state cars and get them ready to haul up to the uh, coal mine. So before we do that though, let's pull up the calculator here and see what we can actually pull. So we're going to zero out everything. Now I do realize that this calculator is not the greatest calculator. Um, maybe with some updates, things got tweaked. I've looked for an update to this calculator and there hasn't been one that I could find. So it seems like it might be a little off, but it's a great starting point in my opinion. So now we have this guy right here. We're going to one. We have our physics on four, which is realistic. The most we're ever going to have is 3%. I'm really trying to keep that at 3%. So, and we have our overhead, which is 10%. So flat state card two. Um, let's say 15 of them. And we're going to be loading those down with beams. And we do 15. Oh, yeah. We, can, we do 5. Do 25 of them. Check that out. Do 30. Oh, we can't do 30. 28. We can do 28. And I believe that's going to be where it's at. If we do 29. Yeah. We can do 28 uh, beam cars. So 
that's probably more than we can afford right now. Um, and of course, we'll have to haul rail up there as well. So uh, I believe it's rail. There's the, the raw iron. So pig iron, raw iron, kind of the same thing. Not really, but kind of the same thing. So that gives us a great starting point. Um, basically, we're going to haul uh, long haul with this locomotive and uh, going to be hauling long, big trains with this locomotive. So, all right, we got the electricity fired up. Got a whole bunch of steam going now. Let's put it in reverse hook up to it. Guess I didn't need to. Oh, we got to hear the whistle. I kind of like it. Different. Nice. All right, reverse her back. Wanted to grab that as the brake. <laughs> Uh, break off. There's the regulator. We'll open it up just a little bit. It should start rolling backwards. Go ahead and couple up. Go. Perfect. This thing got a bunch of water in it. It's been a while since I bought a new locomotive. I can't tell the level of that. We're going to say it's fine. Oops. Alright, we're just going to pull this locomotive up out of the way, go reverse the forward brakes so already off, generator compressors are running, start off, open those cylinder cocks, oh, we got the uh, tender brake on, That right there is the first time I've ever moved a coal-driven locomotive, or coal-fired locomotive, in this game. Break right there, and we're going to buy a bunch of these flat stick cars. Before we do that, though, of course, we need to figure out how many we actually have. Two, one, eight. Eight is our highest number, so eight. Next one will be nine, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and get this get this done and I'm going to um, hopefully surprise Tidmouth with this train. We'll see how it goes. Cool. Alright, um, do me a favor and meet me at the coal mine. Or the uh, iron mine. Ooh, okay, this building's all solid. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes. So with all the grinding that we've been doing the last couple episodes and then me off screen, we were able to uh, afford this locomotive. And uh, yeah, so I got this locomotive teamed up with uh, 18 flat state cars and a caboose, according to the calculator, which is why it was vitally important that we keep it at 3%. This will make it just barely. <laughs> so we'll see what that 4% looks like. So are you ready to go? Yeah. Well, I hop on the caboose. Uh, I assume that's client side the end of the train rolling away. Uh, I, I would think so. Yes, um. it is. <laughs> <laughs> jumping on it and it's teleporting me back. So. Why can't I? It's like putting me up on this on the roof here trying to feed this thing with coal gotta get the firebox warmed up here so i've been driving around this one a little bit uh off screen obviously and i'm in love with this locomotive this locomotive is great all right are you ready uh right i'm in the caboose Perfect. At the moment. <laughs> toot toot. Let's go. Oh, we gotta go forward. Come on. The heavy train. I 
I love the uh, the generator sound in this locomotive as well. I was driving with the weather and and night on with it, and it was awesome. Hearing that that generator spool up and stuff, I love that. Sort yeah. Of thing. <laughs> And this locomotive is stupid fast. Like it, it moves unloaded. I'm yeah, guessing, even, even with a load, I've got it up quite fast. Yeah, as I say, I'm guessing you've driven this this locomotive. It's not new for you, right? Yeah, I've driven I've driven it once or twice. I'm coming up the front so I can enjoy it as well. <laughs> I don't know why I went to the back because I can't see the front. <laughs> <laughs> I figured with a train this long, having a caboose back there with lights on just tells me that's the end of train. You know, if we lose yeah. a car or something, uh, I'll be able to tell almost right away. So. All right. 25 is a little quick for this hill. Go ahead and give us a break. Of course, it's all beams too, and there's no way the coal mine is going to be able to hold all these beams. But this is just testing. We're just having fun, right? Right. <laughs> well, wouldn't it be convenient if somebody built a siding just for that purpose? Yeah, yeah. You didn't leave me, did you? No, I'm still here. Okay. Good. Don't leave me because there are more surprises along the track. All right, so I did actually put some signs around. You'll see here we have one that says our, we got a junction up ahead. I'm breaking pretty good. <laughs> yeah, the wheels just lock up. <laughs> I was going to say, I just full break uh, because I'm not sure the direction of this switch. And we're, we are wrong. We need to turn here. Are you going to get it? Run! <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh-oh. Oh, got it. Oh, you got it. Check that out. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to keep the brakes on because we actually have another switch here. And it is wrong. Can you go grab the switch too, please? Run. Oh, no. Run. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I'm not going to get out. <laughs> That's all right. We can back up. I'll go full reverser and reverse with full regulator. The heavy train. I mean, I could, I guess I could have jumped out of the UI and like set the tender break in the first couple of cars, but. All right, forward we go. You can see I made little signs that like mainline this way and it's the slow. And here's a little town that I made. It's not named yet. I did have a water tower here, but I was having some issues with uh, the tool working, and it was saying that there was a water tower that was incorrect. Hmm. So I've decorated it up a little bit, made a little made a little town here. Um, I believe this sign says name of town here or something like that. I yeah. can't read it from here. <laughs> but I haven't named it yet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's no station house either. Um, get out of the train. Yeah, I think I used uh Whatever this building is, as a station house. This is the sheriff's office. Yeah. Because it's got quite a wide, uh, like overhang compared to the others. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's kind of placed some houses around and stacked up some buildings, decorated up a little bit. Oh, of course I had to play, you know. Yeah. I make it look awesome. That was the the last surprise. All right, Ooh. break off. Ready to go. Yeah. Slightly fell out of the window. 
Oh, okay. Is that all? Yeah, this is kind of a, a, a sighting as well. A passing track, if you will. Um, and adds a little bit of immersion and testing out and checking out the, the props. So we have to figure out a name for this town. I have no idea what the name towns. <laughs> well, maybe we could leave that to the comments. That's what I was thinking. Do you have a brilliant name for, for our town? Leave it in the comments below. Well also, said. leave a like while you're at it. <laughs> right, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. <laughs> I'm going to keep my speed up because there's no real sharp turns and we got a 3% climb not too much further along the line here. Let's see what this locomotive can do. We're at 26. I hope I got all the trees. <laughs> Well, what's life without a bit of risk? Right. Eh? Eh? Exactly. Ah, yeah. Risk? <laughs> yeah. Right there, risk. I figured that'd be a good area right there for a passing track as well, but we have the town right next to it, so... I for foregoed it. Or went it. <laughs> We are at 29 miles per hour. This thing is a... I, I love this locomotive. This is an awesome locomotive. Yeah, I wasn't sure about it when, when I first saw it, because I thought the, the boiler sort of looks a bit too big for, for the body, but... <laughs> Just the, the pulling power and the speed is just like such a like a, a plus. Yeah. It's got that um, American style thing of the uh, black body but like the bare metal or silver front. Mm -hmm. Don't really. Uh, well, I think there's a, there's a few countries that do that. We don't really do that in the UK. <laughs> oh, they don't? No. Oh. I think most, most locomotives in the UK have the front painted all black. Interesting. Uh-oh. We're going to take this uh, passing track. we got to slow down because that's a sharp curve up here. I'm off the regulator. <laughs> Nothing like taking uh, the passing track for no apparent reason. All right, back up 100%. Lost all of our our speed there, all of our momentum. It's a very windy track, but I was having a very hard time getting up those steps. I think I uh, screwed us. Uh-oh. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> oh, that tree not really oh. there? <laughs> like I, uh, I think it is. The train bumped into it. <laughs> okay, yeah. We need to set a break. Where am I? It's like Glitching me out here. Got the tree. I ran this entire thing, but apparently I missed one or two or three. <laughs> All right. Oh. I'm trying to put the lamp on, but I forgot it's the electric one, isn't it? I'm at full reg. Break off. That's not good. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Try to get a little bit more of a run at it. Uh, 
While you're doing that, I'll uh, go ahead and check the priest. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. <laughs> kind of funny, without saying anything to each other, we both used like the old, like color for the for the wooden bridges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all yours are all old as well. I mean, I've, I've used one, but I, I I used the old color for it. So I I just messed up. Um, it's it's fine, uh, but I left the the tender break on uh, while trying to start off there. Uh, uh huh. Yeah, sound familiar? But <laughs> um, I've I've turned it off and I'm backing down past that siding now, and we'll we'll take the main up it and see if that uh, will help us out a little bit. Back locomotive. <laughs> I set the locomotive brake and the tender brake, and it is still like I, I think it's picking up speed <laughs> in reverse. Uh oh, no telegraph offices along this section. <laughs> I mean, there's no regulator on or anything, but it is just that train is so heavy. Just pulling it downhill. I'm gaining on it. There we go. I am back at the controls. more trees along the track? Yeah, uh, there was, but I cleared them. <laughs> Good. You said there was? There was, yeah. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> we are slowing down a little bit. We were doing 15, now we're down to 13. Unfortunately, it does not really level off much for us to pick up speed. So. I'm going to push comes to show and just dump the, uh, the boost. Yeah. That's true. We'll see. It does level off up here in a little bit. Just not very long. Right. Actually, in this area. Right after this uh, trestle bridge. Uh oh. Wow, Ooh. um, that was some bumpy track. Ooh. Mm. Hmm. And we've lost the... Yeah, yeah, I see that. Hey, I'm taking off like a rocket now. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, apparently I, I got some why... bad track right there. I should probably throw a brake on these wagons. Yeah, please uh, do. Uh, yeah, I think it's like, uh, like connected to the... Connected to the wrong thing? Yeah, it's got one of those like... Lot like X in the middle of the track where it's like connected to the wrong side of the spline. Uh, well, the wagons don't seem to be rolling, I think they're actually stuck on it, so oh, that's good. <laughs> Benefit. Well, what's an episode without a derail, right? Oh, okay, one brake is not enough to hold it. <laughs> Nor is two. Well, that's what these right. tests are for. But that's what these tests are for. I don't know which one of them is the one that's wrong. Oh, yeah, look at that. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Did I not let go of that? I thought of. All right, back in locomotive up. Link. Oh, 
Okay. Anything bright. Brakes are all released. Hopefully. All right. Back on track. <laughs> As now, as you can see, it goes from nothing to 3% right here. Just bend upwards. So we are cruising along. We're doing 24. Yeah, the chuffing sounds, sounds stable. We do have the entire train, right? <laughs> Can't see around the bend to see the locomotive or the coast. I can't see the end, anyways. <laughs> Ooh. Whoa. That was kind of. Whoa, -oh, whoa, -oh, whoa, -oh, whoa, -oh, whoa, -oh. whoa. What was that? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> That's one less wagon. <laughs> More of Evil One's nasty track. Well, I gotta go back here and at least see oh, what I didn't even know what that was. It was just like a weird, like, sideways bump. Yeah. Oh, but that was like a bit running away. Yeah, I got it. Oh, uh. oh, oh, wait, no. I think that's just client side. I don't know why. The invisible, invisible wagon here. That did that like that. I mean, is it this, was it this lump in the terrain here? Maybe. I hope not. I mean, that, that would make sense, but... Uh, is there a Lincoln pen in that? No, you don't know. Okay. We're going to say that there's not. And I'm going to slam into this a uh, little bit of a couple cars here. Yep. Bang. Yeah, I mean, the, the, car, the car that's here on the lump does look like it's sort of leaning over. Oh no! Like if you if you come and stand where I am and crouch down, you can see it's sort of like angled slightly downwards on the on the oh, right. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I cut that a little too too close. You know what? I'm gonna put a um, telegraph office right here, and I will come back later and fix it. Is our caboose? Did we lose a caboose? Uh, probably. Probably, roll probably down the rolling hill. down the hill right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, let's just keep going. Yeah. Let's check out the rest of the track. I'll come back and clean this up later. Well, I can report the uh, client side clinking has been fixed, but the client side stuff rolling away is not fixed. <laughs> At least the clinking, that was annoying. Very mm. annoying. Brakes are off. Right, well, now this little train is nothing for this locomotive. Yeah, we've gone from 18 to... Like, 6. <laughs> I think we've got... I think we've got 9. 9? Okay. Well, that's Three. not horrible. Yeah, 9. So we've got, we've got half the train. <laughs> <laughs> 50% dead loss is, uh, you know, that's acceptable at the AD&D. &D. <laughs> oh, right before I wanted to test this, uh, 4% as well. Going through the train wash. 
<laughs> awesome. <laughs> what was that little bit of track that was uh, jetting off to the side there? Oh, I was just trying to get back on. <laughs> oh, gotcha. The switch is at the top of the set. Uh oh, uh oh. We got it. Oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Well. Oh. <laughs> I hit that during about 30. <laughs> well. Yeah, that's right. I didn't clear the trees. <laughs> <laughs> just that one that was <laughs> it happens ask me how I know <laughs> <laughs> one is two wagons rolling away is that just me or yeah, it's just you <laughs> <laughs> did you link it uh, I don't know I'm right clicking I'm me not too. hearing the did you get it? Uh, well, I heard it, so... Okay. Find out. Well, I've been looking at the couple of the tender, possibly. Oh, I think we're good. Oh, can you get the break on the tender, please? Well, we started off with 18 plus a caboose. We're rolling into station with uh, no cars. <laughs> Acceptable losses. Acceptable losses at the AD&D. &D. That's right. All right. Let's go full break. Check out our loop here. Tidna spent a lot of time working on. The important thing is we are actually up here with a locomotive at least. We got up here with a, a train would be better, but you know, that's what these tests are for. Now we know what to fix, right? Yeah. And we can oh, produce that's... coal for our new coal driven, coal fired locomotive risk. Yeah. So what are your thoughts here? What are your plans here? Uh, well, obviously, we're going to need uh, a line going the other way for the, the shortcut at some point. What I'll probably do uh, is sort of make this a bit of a dog bone and have another loop um, where we've got the track going down, so we'll have another switch there and have a loop coming back round. Okay. <laughs> I'll figure something out. All right. <laughs> Sounds great. And obviously we've got the sidings here for shunting a, a banking locomotive or over, overflow wagons. Yeah, we might need uh, a little helper locomotive or something um, up here. If nothing else, just to help like run down rolling stock that's rolling down the hill. Yeah. I can see in the distance the rest of our train right across there. I'm guessing that's outside of your render distance. Yeah, I can see the track. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll MS Paint in a picture of a bunch <laughs> of wagons. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, please remember to hit that like and subscribe buttons if you haven't done so already. Feel free to hit that thumbs down as well, but if you do, do me a big favor and leave a comment letting me know what I can do to improve. And um, Tidmouth, as always, do you have any parting words of wisdom? 
I mean, I was going to say pretty much the same as you. Uh, really. Oh, I stole your thunder. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've, <laughs> I felt like I'm somewhat deliberate. Um, <laughs> oh, I never know what to say. This, this is what I like. When I, when I used to do videos back in the day, I always used to just have like a script on hand for doing like the intro and the outro just because I never know what to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like, comment, subscribe, hit the join button if you're feeling uh, generous. That's uh, right, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to produce like little extra behind the scenesy type videos for channel members, so. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Alrighty, well, I think that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Bye.